हे एवरी वन माई सेल्फ नेहा गुप्ता या मेंट ऑफ अ करंट अफेयर्स सो आई हैव ब्रॉड टू यू अ लॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चन फॉर दिस सेशन विच कैन बी ऑफ रेलिवेंस फॉर योर आर वी एस एवी नबार्ड एग्जामिनेशन सो बिफोर बिगनिंग विद द क्वेश्चन लेट मी इन्फॉर्म यू ऑल दैट यू कैन डाउनलोड दी पी डी एफ ऑफ दिस सेशन ऑन द टेलीग्राम चैनल एंड द लिंक ऑफ आवर चैनल इज इन डिस्क्रिप्शन बिलो सो ऑन दैट नोट लेट्स बिगिन विद द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन so how much is the proposed outlay of this residential education for students in high schools in targeted area scheme so here the right answer is rupees 300 crores now guys this scheme was launched on a very special day that is the death anniversary of dr b r ambedkar bhim rao ambedkar now that de death anniversary of ambedkar is celebrated as महापरा निवारण दिवस विच इज द डे ऑन डिसम्बर सिक्स सो दिस स्कीम वॉज लॉन्च ऑन दिस स्पेसिफिक डे दे फॉर डू रिमेंबर दिस डे नाउ दिस स्कीम इज फॉर द अपलिफ्टमेंट ऑफ एस सी स्टूडेंट्स एंड हाउ विल यू बी एबल टू रिमेंबर दिस थिंग यू कैन इजिली रिमेंबर इट इफ यू रिमेंबर दिस फैक्ट बिकॉज बोथ ऑफ दीज आर इंटर कनेक्टेड महापरा निवारण दिवस इज द डेथ एनिवर्सरी ऑफ बी आर अम्बेडकर एंड वी ऑल नो दैट अम्बेडकर इज वन फिगर दैट हु हैज वर्क मैसिवली फॉर द अपलिफ्टमेंट ऑफ एस सीज दे फॉर ऑन हिज डेथ एनिवर्सरी एज अ मार्क ऑफ ऑनर द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ सोशल जस्टिस एंड एम्पावरमेंट हैज लॉन्च्ड दिस scheme for the upliftment of sc students and the scheme is shreshth now whenever you are covering any scheme that has an acronym like this your responsibility is to remember the full form of that scheme as well now from the name itself residential education for students in high schools in targeted areas so from the name itself the entire purpose of the scheme is revealed residential education basically schools which would have residential facilities or also now if the residential facilities is provided the residential facilities are there in the schools then obviously it would be helpful for the students to stay within the school to have a basically holistic education where you will be getting the food also where you will be getting the entire curriculum so in order to reduce the dropout rate of the students who are in the high schools classes 9th to 12th this scheme has been launched which will in encourage the private schools to have residential facilities so that the dropout rate would reduce so that is the whole purpose of this scheme now it will run for 5 years from 2021 to 2026 moving on to the next question when was the dg yatra policy operationalized so we have so many years right answer is 2019 now do remember that the scheme was introduced in 2018 but it was implemented in 2019 now what is the recent news regarding this digi yatra policy so the recent news is that airports at varanasi pune kolkata and vijayawada all of these airports have introduced the face recognition technology which will basically eliminate the need for carrying the body uh, body passes in the airplanes okay so that is the one initiative that has been launched and it will be introduced by march 2022 so that is the current news now for this initiative the airport authority of india has engaged this nec corporation private limited for implementing the technology which is a part of this digi yatra policy now digi yatra policy aims to make the air journey air travel paperless so that the passengers would not have to carry any kind of physical papers in order to board a plane or uh, travel via plane okay now do remember this point as well which state has received us dollar 135 million loan from the international bank for reconstruction and development for upgrading its rural power distribution network so here the right answer is west bengal now guys international bank for reconstruction and development is a part of world bank world bank group so we can directly say that this loan has been taken from the world bank 
now uh, you don't have to go into the details of this loan that what is the grace period what is the tenure etc neither you have to go into the details of this distribution network or the actions of the state government in relation to this loan because that is not important for the examination point of view particularly if you are catering to rbi uh, nabad and sebi okay next question is what is the uh if course rank in the 10th annual world cooperative monitor 2021 report so guys here the rank is first so basically this is a report that monitors the cooperatives across the world now 300 cooperatives across the world have been assessed in this report which is the 10th edition of this report now this report is released by international cooperative alliance which is based in brussels belgium okay so this is another point that you should be aware of now what are the parameters on which the cooperatives are assessed in this report so the basic parameter is the ratio of turnover over the gdp per capita so on the basis of this uh, parameter ifco from india has been uh at rank at the first position then we have group credit agricole which is a cooperative of france at the third position we again have an indian company that is gujarat cooperative milk marketing federation limited which is the owner of amul brand okay so these are the top 3 uh, top 3 cooperatives that have been ranked in this report now if we look at in terms of usd the in terms of turnover in us dollars then the first cooperative the cooperative that has been ranked at the first position is group credit agricole from france then group bpce from france then rewe group from germany these three are the top ones now related to ifco you need to know that this year only in 2021 only ifco introduced the world's first nano urea okay so this is very uh, this is a very big development next is the md and ceo of ifco is dr us avasti now this is also important for you to memorize because ifco can be asked in the examination particularly because this is also a very recent news this is a happening of june i guess june july ka uh, news hai ye and because of this particular ranking that we have just discussed So next question here is which bank has launched Mahila Mitra Plus facility? So here the right answer is Federal Bank. Now this Mahila Mitra Plus is basically the saving account scheme for the females. Okay, there is nothing much that you need to memorize from this uh, news because similar kind of products are nowadays being launched by many banks. Therefore, uh, I don't think that too much detail would be asked from you. So you can just memorize that this is. the federal bank private sector land uh, private sector bank that has launched this mahila mitra plus initiative now your task is to tell me the tag line of this bank in the comment section below next question is which organization has signed an mou uh, with the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship to train 6000 individuals over a total period of 3 years in the rapidly growing fintech industry so flipkart google pay amazon pay paytm phone pay are in the options right answer is paytm so there would be a 6 months program which would be designed by paytm along with directorate general of training which uh, uh, which works under the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship and there is nothing much to this news apart from this thing that paytm has partnered with the ministry for training the youth in the fintech industry Uh, okay you need to know the target of this mou okay so under this mou only 6000 people are targeted what is oecd's forecast for india for fy23 so here the right answer is 8.1% okay so for the current year the forecast is 9.4% for next year 8.1% for fy24 it is 5.5% 
okay so these are the forecasts right now since there is no examination coming so you don't have to memorize these forecasts this is for your information purpose okay because the oecd has reduced this forecast for india uh, from 9.7 which was pronounced earlier and this 9.7 was also slashed from earlier uh, forecast so continuously we are seeing that oecd is slashing india's gdp forecast in light of that uh, action this is important for you to know okay therefore i have put it here but once any examination uh, comes or notification comes out of a rbi or sebi i would definitely cover all the gdp forecast by all the organizations in a special session for you all okay so next question is who has been appointed as unesco uh, goodwill ambassador for cultural and creative industries so here right answer is naomi kawase now she is basically a filmmaker from japan so do remember the occupation the country for, from which she belongs now she is the director general of unesco next question is who has been appointed as the next deputy managing director of imf so geeta gopinath is the right answer her tenure at imf was about to end in january uh, next year and imf has just appointed her as the deputy managing director now okay now do remember this thing that before her jofri was the um, uh, was the first ever deputy managing director of imf now she has not only become the first indian to be posted at this position she has also become the first women to be posted at this position okay so this makes it all the more important so guys here this session ends if you liked the content then do subscribe the channel like this video and share it among your friends thank you so much prepare hard keep preparing because consistency is the key to success thank you so much guys for watching this video